Hi everyone, it's John Mitchell and in today's video we're going to look at Michael Porter's generic strategies theory. So Porter's a really renowned scholar and in his generic strategies theory he identified strategies that businesses can use to gain a competitive advantage within their industry and he says that businesses should be implementing one of these particular strategies and so the goal is about being the best in the industry at the chosen strategy that they do and that enables them to gain a competitive advantage. And so there's two strategies that our study design focuses on which is the lower cost strategy and the differentiation strategy. So let's start with a lower cost strategy. The main idea here is that the business can gain a competitive advantage by being the low cost producer in its industry. So it's about being the most cost efficient producer. Now, this is not just about minor cost reductions. The goal here is to be the industry's cost leader and be the low cost producer in the industry, being the best at that. Now, businesses can achieve this in a whole number of different ways. For example, they could achieve economies of scale by operating on a large scale in large volumes and doing so improves their efficiency of the business and enables them to reduce the cost per unit that's actually being produced. The business could also improve efficiency throughout the business by implementing things like technological advancements that improve the speed of production, waste reduction, or enables automated processes so there's fewer humans and resources used to produce the products. Or they could just look at all areas of the business and look to implement cost reduction strategies across a whole range of areas. So essentially businesses that are employing the lower cost strategy are aiming to be as lean as possible, like offering sort of a no frills, efficient product that's still competitive within the industry. So while it's a no frills type good or service, doesn't mean that it's a product that nobody wants. It still holds value in the marketplace because it has features that customers actually desire. However, it just may not have all the bells and whistles that other products necessarily offer. And by doing this, the business is able to be a cost leader and have the lowest cost in its industry. And that results in a competitive advantage because the business then has the ability to either reduce prices to try and attract those price sensitive customers or maintain close to industry average prices, maybe a little bit below industry average, but sort of closer to that industry average and therefore increase their profit margins. And so a perfect example of a successful low cost strategy is that is Jetstar, the budget airline Jetstar. Now it's known for its no frills yet competitive service. And so by reducing their costs and offering a relatively standard service, they're able to lower their ticket prices and therefore be more attractive to the price sensitive travelers. Now, one advantage of the lower cost strategy clearly is that it's able to gain a competitive advantage for the business, but it's able to do so by attracting those price sensitive customers, which can help the business actually increase its market share. And being a cost leader does enable the business to withstand price wars longer than their competitors. Because if there is a price war and the competitors are looking to drop their prices in order to try and attract customers, well, the business with the lowest costs is able to withstand that longest as because they maintain some form of profit margin over other businesses. However, there are also some risks associated with a lower cost strategy. For instance, constantly reducing costs and always looking to be this cost leader could impact on the quality over time. And lower prices might actually have a perception of lower quality, which can alienate some customers. Plus, maintaining cost leadership can be really difficult over the long term because other businesses can adopt the same technology or cost saving measures to reduce their costs. And therefore, it can be really difficult to sustain that over a long period. So we'll move now to the differentiation strategy, which is where the business is looking to gain a competitive advantage by being unique in some way that's valued by customers. So they're really trying to stand out from their competitors in some way. And so customers are then attracted by that unique offering and the business is then rewarded by being able to charge a premium price for the good or service that they have. Because by being unique, the customers are attracted to whatever that uniqueness is and are willing to pay more for it. And there's lots of different approaches to being unique that businesses can, can use. And so one example is the design or product features like Apple's unique product designs. It could be that they have a unique brand image that helps them to stand out from the competitors like Nike's really distinctive brand. Businesses can be unique with the technology that they offer to their customers or that they use in their operations, like Tesla's technology they use in their cars really gives them a competitive advantage against other car manufacturers. Uh, 
A business can stand out with their customer service that they offer, like Mecca Cosmetica. It could be the relationships they have, like Nike's relationship with Michael Jordan and the incredible success that the Jordan brand has had for Nike. Or it could be the distribution that businesses have, like Amazon's incredible distribution network that they have across the world. So there's just some examples of how businesses can be unique. There's lots of other ways as well that you could probably come up with. But the key to differentiation is not just about being unique, but being the best in the industry at that unique factor. And so that enables the business to charge a premium price for their product and attracting customers who value the uniqueness over the price. So as with the lower cost strategy, differentiation also has some pros and cons. So some advantages include that they're able to build strong brand loyalty, helping them to gain a competitive advantage. And those repeat customers that are loyal to that particular brand can create a stronger sense of desire for the product, which enables the business to charge that premium price. And also the business is less susceptible to price wars because the customers are willing to pay more to really gain that uniqueness. They're paying for that uniqueness and that image that they receive with purchasing that product. And also there's a potential to increase profit margins as a result of charging that premium price. However, being unique is often more expensive and it increases the cost of the business. And having a premium price can actually narrow the market because there's the potential that some customers may not be able to afford or justify the higher price. There's also risks that competitors may be able to replicate the differentiated features, which can take away any competitive advantage. And another challenge is that constantly changing customer preferences could also impact a business's differentiation advantage. For example, if a business has built a reputation on a specific feature of a good or service, but then customer preferences shift away from that feature then they may lose their competitive advantage. This is why constant innovation is so important in businesses. Now, it's important to note that Porter emphasized that businesses should concentrate on implementing one of these strategies, not necessarily both, because attempting to pursue both risks mediocrity in both areas, which Porter calls being stuck in the middle. We need to remember that it's not about being good at a particular strategy, but about being the industry's best at the chosen strategy. And he says that by focusing on one of those strategies, they are able to do that. Now, that said, Porter also advised that they can't ignore the other strategy entirely. For example, while a business can look to lower costs, they can't completely ignore quality or the features that customers find valuable. And while in the differentiation strategy, the business can't completely ignore costs, despite them being able to charge a premium price for their product, because if the costs arise so far that they offset that premium price that can be charged, the profit margin disappears and therefore any advantage is lost. So just to recap, Porter's generic strategies theories offers businesses two key approaches for them to gain a competitive advantage. There's the lower cost strategy, which is where the business is gaining a competitive advantage by lowering their costs and being the low cost producer in their industry. And then therefore they're able to lower their prices to be more attractive to the price sensitive consumer. And then there's a the differentiation strategy, which is where the business is unique in some way that is valued by customers. And so customers are attracted to that uniqueness and the business is able to charge a premium price. And as we went through, there's lots of different ways that businesses can look for that differentiation or that uniqueness. And businesses need to be focusing on one strategy or they risk being stuck in the middle. So that brings us to the end of this video and it also brings us to the end of this outcome. So congratulations on making it this far. We have one outcome to go and then that is the end. I can't wait to see you in the next video where we'll begin the final outcome. But until then, just remember that for questions, activities and helping your VCE journey, then come on over to teachingbubble.com.